morning. I almost forgot that I was going to vlog today for you. Um, we're going to do a life uh, in the wedding planner, like a day in the, the life of a wedding planner. Um, my hair probably looks crazy because I'm trying to let it dry. So <laughs> it's just everywhere. Um, yeah, so I have been working for about an hour now. It's 930. Um, I've been working for about an hour on uh, client work. Um, I will show you a, let's see if this is going to pull it up. Yes. So I'm not going to show you obviously any names or anything. Um, <clears throat> but I will show you this style guide I put together for a wedding uh, that I have this summer and I love it because they love color and I love color <laughs> even though I almost all the time wear black I love color so look how beautiful and I need to change my battery already uh, look how beautiful this style guide is we had lots of color um, French and Dutch influences romantic details they love music we're gonna work that in um, some fun things with flowers and this little dessert cart is so cute and they're just doing a cutting cake so um, we don't need a big dessert display so freaking pretty uh so i got the approval on that this morning so i suggested their floral um designers to look at so they can figure out um we can figure out which florist we're going to work with and then right now I'm working on a spring wedding and I'm going to get started on putting their timeline together. So let me change the batteries in the camera and then I will show you how I do this. Okay, so I am still a paper person. I still print and write on paper for a lot of things. So each client gets their own purple slash pocket. And then I have this kind of form that I fill out with each vendor and it helps keep track of what vendors we've hired and where we are in the process with each one. So, um, as you can see, I have all the contracts except for the band. Um, and then I've grayed outlines of vendors that we don't really need to communicate with. Um, or that I don't really need a contract with, like the bridal dress. I really don't need that contract. I will ask who the bridal shop is at some point in the process before the wedding because I do like to have their name to be able to tag on social media. But um, for this purpose, I don't need to communicate with them at all. Um, so... What's next? Um, so I, I mark whether I've got the contract. I mark whether I have introduced myself to them. Um, if it's somebody the client hired directly, I definitely want to reach out. If it's somebody that I have facilitated the process with, then obviously I can check that off. Um, and in this case, the venue has pretty specific guidelines for each vendor. So I've marked that I actually sent those to each vendor as well. And I probably will send them again one more time before the wedding day. Um, so at 30 days, <clears throat> I like to reach out to get the day of timeline logistics and any last minute things that they need worked out. So I have a um, communication at 30 days before the wedding, at 14 days, and then I'll confirm that they confirmed that they got this and, and answered my questions. Um, I have the final communication that I send out the week of the wedding and then I want to make sure that I follow up with each vendor 
And then if I've never left them a review before, I will leave them a review. Um, and then I can check all the boxes off for all the things and know that we're on track. Um, okay, so when I go to make my timeline, I use a service called Timeline Genius, a software. It is great. Um, I, because it's the first, I'm working on the first wedding of this year, I need to go through and clean up my Rolodex a little bit, which is the list of vendors that I work with. Um, and then I want to go through, I always start with a template because it makes things easier to um, start with a customized template that I've created. Um, and then I will customize it for the wedding. So I need to go through that template also and um, just clean it up a little bit. There's a couple just little things that I want to change. Um, and then I will go through with this list of vendors and their contracts. I have all the contracts printed out um, that I will input all the vendors um, and start working up their wedding day timeline. Now we are still, let's see, February, March, April, May. We're a little less than three months away. So I'm not contacting vendors yet at this point. I just kind of want to get organized and um, get started on that. It usually takes me a good like two hours to get a timeline, a very thorough timeline, um, initial draft completed. And um, I would like to get that done today, um, specifically because there's some questions about timing for photos and getting the wedding party to the venue and things like that. Um, so I kind of want to get it laid out on paper so I can see what we're working with. Um, but other than that, for today, um, I just have client work on the menu. I actually have an eye appointment this afternoon, so I'm going to be heading out a little early for that. Um, but I, had, I know I had a lot of client work today, so to make up for it, I did not work out this morning, which I know is not a great choice. But I um, made that choice. <laughs> and then this evening, Olivia's got a basketball game. So um, should be a pretty easy day. And I will, yeah, I'll get back to you with anything exciting that pops up. I also want to mention when I'm building a timeline, in addition to contracts and my vendor list, I also have, um, I want to make sure, I don't think there's any names or anything on here. I also have a preliminary photo list um, timeline from the photographer. And then as we are planning, so I kind of start out with this blank template. Um, we make a tentative schedule at one of our first meetings. And then as things change, as things are updated, I just kind of keep a running list of the timeline with the changes. That way, um, if there's anything time specific, I don't forget. So for example, this couple ended up adding on the additional bridal suite at their venue. So that is available to them at 10 a.m. Um, they're doing a first look in one outfit and then they're changing into their bridal outfit and doing another first look. So just kind of things like that to keep track of. Um, I try and kind of note the sunset time, uh, ending and exit. Um, they added 30 minutes to their bar, so they have five and a half hours for their bar and then they scheduled an after party. So just kind of like time related things. I use this to keep track of. All right, I do want to reiterate again that this is a template that I start with. However, by the end of this timeline process, it looks completely different um, for every couple. Everything is customized, everything. For example, when you get down to the bottom and you see the list of items to bring, that looks almost completely different for every couple by the end of it. So it's just a, a master list of things that any couple could possibly need to bring. So with that being said, 
Obviously, we will customize this with their name, their actual date. Um, but I start at the top with um, my phone number so vendors can easily see how to contact me if they need to. Um, I will put my team's on-site time. Um, so not just when I'm there, but when anybody rep representing my company is there. And then I always forget to do this, but I try and update um, the date. So this was updated on whatever, because there could be many versions of this until the, you know, before the wedding day. So I put the updated on date. So vendors always know if they're seeing the most up-to-date one. Um, so then we have a meet the couple section <clears throat> that I will put a photo in. Um, this is typically just for my full planning clients, sometimes my partial planning, because um, I, if I get to know them really well and I feel like I can, um, you know, write a little blurb about them, kind of introduce them to the vendors a little bit, because a lot of times vendors will be hired and then you won't talk to them again until very close to your wedding. So just to give the vendors a little preface on who they are as a client, um, if I'm hired for just coordination, sometimes I don't really get to know them as well as I would like to. So sometimes my coordination clients don't get this. Um, the vision, if they have hired me for full planning or design work, I will include the mood board or the style guide here. Um, and at the very least, I will list their color palette. Um, important information. Things happening in the area, this is especially important um, for like if there's any festivals that might affect parking in the area. Um, weather obviously is not going to be updated until like the week of the wedding. Anything that I know I need to update, I put in yellow. Um, as I build the timeline, if there's something that's unknown that I need from the client, I will highlight that in yellow as well. Um, Vendor seating and meals, I will put a blurb here, whether we have a separate room or if we have a certain table in the room um, and what meals we are going to get. Um, closest hospitals, just, you know, again, just in case um, something were to go down. I, knock on wood, have never had to use that, but we have had to call 911. Um, so you never know. Um, venue guidelines, how to enter the property, loading and unloading, and then parking. I will put for all the relevant places. Um, guest information, catering counts, allergies, things like that, I will put here. The venue usually has their own sheet for this too, but um, I like to make sure my information matches with theirs. And then we've got the timeline. Again, times, dates will all be updated, um, places. I need to, so this, I include the Spotify playlist. Um, I need to double check it and make sure it's still a thing. I guess I could just do that, right? <clears throat> um, this is something another planner built and then shared. Yeah, so it's got just some fun fun wedding day, you know, upbeat songs. So uh, I always include that. And then um, anytime a vendor is arriving, I highlight it in this salmon color just to trigger my brain to be looking out for someone. Uh, so just get an idea of how detailed these timelines are. Um, some things will be deleted if they don't apply. For example, if they don't have transportation, they're taking their own vehicles, that will be deleted. Um, all of these tips, most of them come from other planners that have done this a lot longer than me. Um, a lot of what I have on here comes from trial and error. Um, if I'm at a wedding day and something, 
you know, I write, I, I continually write the same things into the timeline as notes on the wedding day, then I'll just add a section for it. Um, again, a lot of this won't be filled in until closer to the wedding. Uh, once they get, you know, we start talking about ceremony order and things like that. Um, and then in addition to the timeline, um, well, let me point this out at the end of, in the, in the timeline, I can't remember. I think I learned this from Renee Dallow. Um, adding a time for when the formalities are complete. So your dances are over, dinner's over, speeches are over. It's just time to party. It's helpful for vendors to know that. So I started adding that in there. Um, when the photographer leaves the reception. So also under the timeline, I have this couple's packing list, things they want for getting ready and their photographer detail shots. Um, for their ceremony and for their cocktail hour or reception. Um, again, that will be updated. I have a packing list for me of things, and I'll add the, you know, other things that I need to bring that I've said they could use, whether it's easels or dessert trays or whatever. I'll add that to make sure I get it packed. Um, this is basically the section we live in for setup and clean up. Um, this will be filled in and will probably be a page of its own by the end of it um, for a lot of couples, uh, their setup and their cleanup. Then of course we have venue contacts, the event team is all listed, wedding party contacts, and then the last section I include is a easy list of vendors and their Instagram handles. So it's very easy for vendors to copy and paste it and make sure to credit people appropriately. Um, the only other thing that I would include that doesn't have a section is a floor plan. And that typically is, I just print separately and include. Um, as it gets closer to spring and summer and fall and we get to actually um the week of the weddings i will try and remember to show you how i put together the binder that um all of this paperwork gets put into a binder for the wedding day um that way is oh excuse me that way it is very easy to find what we need all right i just had lunch <clears throat> I've got catfish on in the background like most days. Um, I just did some floor plan options for one of my couples this summer. I use, uh, it used to be called All Seated, now it's called Prism. But, um, just a, this is the very, very first one. Actually, it would go this way. There's windows all along this wall. So um, the tables, shoot, they want to be back up to the windows. And then the other space, this is not the full space. This is just the dinner space. This is actually the full space. So this is dinner. So like their tables would be here and guests here. <clears throat> they're actually doing their ceremony indoors so it would be here and then guests will go out here for cocktail hour and we'll put these chairs at the tables so these are just some options that the floor uh, the venue sent me and then a blank copy with dimensions so next time we meet I'll show them this and see what they think Um, so I had lunch. I made a delicious salad with um, spring greens, bacon, blue cheese, pecans, and my favorite salad dressing of the moment. It's a New Orleans inspired, inspired vinaigrette. Um, I will find the recipe and put it in the comments below. 
delicious. Um, so I have about an hour and a half until I have to go to my eye appointment. Um, so to be honest, I'm done with everything I wanted to do today. And looking ahead at things that I want to do this week, um, there's really nothing that I would want to start right now because I don't think I would finish it. Um, maybe, maybe some party, some worksheets. So I like to start with a worksheet, just like the timeline, I start with a template. Um, so when I first meet with a client, I have a wedding worksheet where we kind of just get basic details of their event. And I need to create one that's similar for non-wedding parties because I have quite a few of those coming up. So uh, maybe I'll do that. I'm going to start with the wedding one, I think, and then kind of adjust it to be where it could work for other events. Um, so let's do that. Well, that didn't take long at all. Ignore the printer noises in the background. Um, so I updated the wedding one to include, um, to be for non-wedding events. So the celebrant, anybody helping them plan, uh, number of guests, who are the guests, ages of the guests, local or out of town. Um, this will tell me if they need a room block somewhere. Um, estimated budget, is that flexible at all? High priorities, low priorities, overall vision, colors, special considerations, um, miscellaneous info. Page two is if they don't have a venue, um, we can go over, you know, what are their must-haves and location, etc. And then I've got a tentative schedule for the party day. Um, so hopefully that helps. I have two meetings coming up this weekend that one is a graduation party, one is a first birthday party, and, um, this will help me kind of guide the meeting and not forget about any details. Video, we'll be demonstrating domain authentication using Bluehost. I hate this so crap. specific steps will vary by <laughs> provider, and we've got a playlist walking through the process with different domain hosting services linked below. In your main... All right. I have some packages from Amazon to open. They are items that are for an event that I'm doing this year. Hold on. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can get them out without completely taking apart the box. Um, so, and I hope this isn't upside down. It is definitely upside down. Anyway, they're for a specific event that I'm helping with this year. However, they're items that would be good to have on hand to use. Um, so let me, I'll be right back. Let me get these out of the package. All right, I'm kind of surprised I didn't break anything. It's a nice little, thank you. Card. Does it open? It does. <clears throat> Try me out. Customer service. That's nice. Okay. So there's two levels here, but they are antique looking. Probably not actual antique. Bud vases. <clears throat> and they're just clear um, and they're different shapes sizes and there's like I said there's two so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 so there's 30 total okay so there's that one so these were ridiculous it was in the Amazon box then it was in this box and then there were two boxes in that box. <laughs> These are votive holders that are silver. I have clear ones, um, but now I have silver ones and they're kind of like mercury glass sort of style. 
and it's exciting. They do not come with any stickers on the bottom. Um, so yeah, those are all from Amazon. I will try and remember to link them below. If you're interested, recording, I guess I wasn't. Long story short, those are for Olivia's basketball banquet. Um, and then of course I will reuse them for um, other events. Uh, I have a meeting Saturday with the other parents planning the banquet and I'm hoping to be able to put together at least one of the bud vases and take in one candle so they can see it. And then my only question to them is about the tablecloth. Um, the colors of the school are black, silver, and white. So love it, but also restrict it, right? So I was gonna get black sequins overlays for the tables that come with white linens, but those are really expensive for the size that we need. And I'm not sure when I would use those again. So I'm going to ask them, would they rather do like a satin overlay, a black satin overlay, or a, we could do a black sequenced runner, um, or we could just do the white tablecloth. Um, so I'll ask them what their opinion is on that on Saturday. All right, it is uh, actually two days later, and I'm gonna go ahead and end this vlog here. Um, let me know if you like this, seeing the day in the life of a wedding planner, because I would love to give you more if you do. Um, also, in the comments below, um, put any questions you have for a wedding planner. I am planning a Q&A video at some point. And then um, also, if you would like to know any hot takes on the wedding industry, I would love to do a video on that as well. Um, I'd love to share my opinions. <laughs> so um, yeah, let me know and I will see you in the next video.